Welcome back to Fishing for Bees. In my introduction, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Rick, and again, I am not a professional video person or editing, so I'm going to try and do the best I can, not make this too jumpy. Anyways, uh, as stated in the introduction, I was going to go over the building of swarm traps. First thing you need to do is source some wood. I've used everything from plywood to OSB board. We were fortunate enough to get quite a bit of scrap from a roofing job. Um, ask builders, ask friends. I thought everybody had OSB laying around, but maybe not. Um, I just asked the roofers to save any workable pieces. So obviously this is scrap from my cutoff. This isn't what they saved me. Um, but everything they saved me, I was able to get all dimensions and sizes for these swarm traps. So first things first, you got to find some wood, um, half inch. I've used and five eighths. Um, I've even mixed half inch and five eighths between the same swarm trap. Works fine. Some say don't use OSB, but since I wax coat the inside of my swarm traps, I'm fine with the OSB. I would not torch it. I would tor be fine with torching the plywood, but I wouldn't torch the OSB with the glues and everything else used in it. So I'm going to pause this, pull out some stuff, and I'll be back. So as for cutting your plywood or your OSB board, you don't need a bunch of expensive tools. You don't need a table saw. Although the full sheets of plywood and OSB can be difficult to work with. This is what I use. It's just a circular saw and a Craig tool. I can't remember the exact name of it. But if you get one that looks like this, there's two different styles. One for ripping much wider boards and then this one. This one goes to the dimensions that I need as far as the furthest width of any of the boxes. Um, I basically use a sacrificial piece of foam underneath my plywood. So for instance, if this was a plywood I was ripping, I would set my dimensions. Although I measure mine, it does have the dimensions on there. If you have it set up right, you can just simply slide the Craig jig back and forth by lifting this to what you want to rip. And then you start at the edge of the board, this traces it, and it rips a perfectly straight cut for you. I'm very happy with it. I don't believe it was super expensive. Some people love Craig, some people don't. I think this was a, a good purchase. I'm very happy with it. It's made wonderfully straight cuts. And even when I've had boards that came from roofing jobs that weren't the greatest, that may have been an angle or a pitch or something like that, such as this, as long as you still have a straight side, you can make the cuts that you need. Uh, you could even do it um, on the short ends, wide ends, and you'll get what you need out of it. Another power tool I use for the construction of the swarm traps is just a simple miter saw. For making the shorter cuts, such as on the edges here and the frame rests, it doesn't go deep enough to do the bodies of them. That's why I use the Craig tool, but this has worked fine for me. I got it at Harbor Freight, used it for another project, and then started using it for this. I'm happy with it. Just, again, simple miter saw, not necessary at all. You could hand saw the small pieces. There's other ways of doing everything. This is just what I use, and I found it to be helpful and a time saver. A couple other things I use in the construction of the swarm traps is uh, just for speed and ease. I use a brad nailer. It also does staples, again, from Harbor Freight, Central Pneumatic. I like it because it can do nails and staples, uh, carpenter square, pencil. I just use 18, eight, 18 gauge, 1 and 3 16 inch, uh, along with this. Just again, it's speed. Just goes through them a lot faster. There's other ways of fastening. It's not the only way that it can be done. You could use screws. You could pound nails. Uh, one thing that you do need to use, I don't think there's any way around it, is glue, which I use type on. There's all different kinds of type on. This is the one that I found. Had it for a while. But uh, I'm sure people will tell me that you should use type on 2 or whatever, but type on 3, that's what I've used. It fills in all the gaps. Plus, if the bees are in there long enough, they're going to take care of that for you. So those are the last of the power tools, and I will show you how I assemble them. 
I forgot to mention in the last part that obviously with the nailer you need an air compressor. Even a small one will work. You don't need a big one. So the next step I do is I have these clamps to try and keep everything at a right angle. I don't like anything to be sloppy. Uh, again, probably not necessary, especially for the lids, these smaller pieces, but when you get into the bigger boxes, trying to balance them with your arms, your elbows, and your hands and everything else, trying to use your forearms, it just isn't fun. So I bought these, again, Harbor Freight, inexpensive. I really like them. Um, they're not the easiest to adjust. There's other styles. There's quicker ones, but I found that these worked well for me, especially, again, with the, the bodies themselves, not so much with the lids. But you put a little bit of tight bond in between the seam, and then I line them up and nail them from the top. Probably these close to have about 20 on the long side, maybe eight on the short side. Holds everything well. And again, I'm not gonna put them in the hive boxes themselves, but as you can see, uh, when they get tall like this, they start to bend out at the top and the bottom. And by using these, I was able to keep everything nice and straight. No seams, no gaps. So once again, I'm happy with it. If you're gonna build a lot of them, then maybe you'd be interested in getting some tools. If you're just gonna build one or two, I think you can get away with a lot cheaper and get everything done without having to have investments and tools, but these have come in handy and with um, boxes and everything else as far as building your deeps and your mediums and all that, it's just helped to really tighten up the joints and keep everything really nice. So again, it's a pretty straightforward design with the lids, just a rectangular box also. You'll need to think about what you're going to do when you catch them and how you're going to move them. They have the spinning discs. I didn't bother investing in any of those. I just lightly put this on with a screw and it closes them off when I need to. Opens them up. I do have some trim nails in there just hammered in in the middle and then bent back to keep the birds and the rodents out. Obviously you can do that with screen. The other thing you need to think about is how you're going to hang it. Because these are not a migratory cover and they're a telescoping cover, you need a space. If you don't have that space, then this lid isn't going to fit on if your hanging bracket is flush. So when I hang them, I usually put just a nail to start with. Um, I also have straps with hooks. And just, just hold it in place while I'm centering it. And then I run a ratchet strap through here and around the tree just to give it that more secure. These things can get really heavy, a little bit heavy to start with. And I always uh, plan on possibly having to feed. So I have a hole in the top of my swarm traps for feeding with a plug. If I need to feed, I just simply remove the plug and then I can feed right through the top at the top of the frames. Also, I, uh, the lids are not airtight, but I do believe in ventilation. Probably gone a little bit overkill on some of these. Some of them have three. And if I choose not to use them, you can see on this side, I just simply tape over them. So if they get really warm, I have had starter strips that were just bonded in with wax actually get hot and fall out in those hot summer days. So I have the option of ventilating more or less just by using some simple painter's tape. And a lot of times I just use the one but occasionally I have used two. And when I do move them, sometimes I will put a screen over here and just staple it in just in case uh, they, that that's become damaged or any way they could get out. So that's about it. Other than uh, the inside of them, one thing that I want to point out is I do like the design of these. Instead of having to make multiple cuts, this one, the outer shell, as you can see, is just short, which allows your frames to rest in there and not come in contact with the lid. And then you just cut a short piece for the outside edge to finish up the box. So I just thought it was a simpler design. It's not my design. I found it. I have made some adjustments to it. I will put the dimensions in the description. Also, not necessary. I do have a lip on the front of mine. Um, just made it easier to make sure I didn't have any shorter cuts. And then also when they've landed on there, gives them something to hang on to. 
uh, if they're going to be in there a while, it works like a landing board for your normal Langstrumpf hive. So that's just one thing that I've done. Also with the lids, I do uh, strap them down when moving them. The last thing I want is bees in the cab with me, but I did add these to hold them down when they're in place uh, in the trees so that I don't have to put a brick on them or anything like that. And there is some play in these, so I'm able to move them around if I don't get it on the right way, such as if I were to put it on this way, it still can fit. I can still get my class in there and it still can hold it. So with that, that's, we'll wrap up uh, construction. And uh, I think in a little bit here, I'll go over just some other options as far as swarm traps. These are the ones I use. This is what I've been successful with, but you do have other options. So here's a color, couple other options for your swarm traps. You can use a nuke box, just a standard five frame deep wooden nuke box. Um, this is just a cleat on the outside with an angled cut on it. You make two of them. The one you mount to the tree is obviously facing up. This one's facing down and they marry together pretty well. Um, I'm not that big of a fan of the migratory covers on my swarm traps. I do like the telescoping because if there's any gap, uh, although it does add ventilation, it can also add moisture and you, it's very important that you keep these dry. So again, I don't, I have hung these. Um, I don't use them often, but if I'm desperate, I will use my nuke boxes as a swarm trap. And then also Pro Nuke makes these plastic nuke boxes, which are pretty slick. It's going to be difficult for me to take this apart, but it's basically a five frame nuke on one side. I just have it open right now. So this is your entrance for your, for your swarm trap. And then also this is an example of that same door, but closed. So you can open it on either side. They are ventilated. They also give you an option for feeding through the top just like I do with my swarm traps and also my nuke boxes. So they're pretty nice. Again, five frames. If I were to use a nuke box and not a swarm trap, I would not put five drawn out combs. First of all, I would never put five drawn out combs in there anyways. If you get wax moths or small hive beetles introduced into your swarm trap, you're just wasting your comb. So one drawn comb, and then if I were to use the smaller boxes, because these other ones are just about 40 liters, and then these are much smaller, you want a void. So what I use is a starter strip, and then I use the fishing line to uh, have them bind the comb to it. So it's just a little bit more stable in case it bounces around or anything like that. But when they enter, they want to see a void. So you don't want five frames of plastic foundation or... Um, one frame of drawn comb and four frames of plastic foundation. You want them to enter there, see a void, know that they have room to grow, and you can use plastic foundation. Uh, I have caught with no drawn comb. It certainly helps to have drawn comb, but make sure it's dry draw comb, that it doesn't have honey stores or anything that other bees could just go in there and rob. You'll show up to your swarm trap, you'll get excited, you think you got them scouting and actually all they're doing is robbing resources. So you do want dry, drawn comb and um, no resources if you can get away with it as far as honey in that comb. These are the caps that I use for the vents on the swarm traps as I showed earlier. They are slightly deep and can interfere with your frames on the inside so I do trim them down about halfway before I mount them. There's several other kinds of vents. Actually, there's some metal ones out there that are similar with the louver that have a screen on the inside. These are basically just ridge vents. Uh, I did like those, couldn't find them at the time. I haven't tried those out yet, so I just keep buying the ones that I can find that are readily available to me. So I think that wraps it up for the construction of the swarm traps. If you do have any questions, Please ask in the comments below. I will answer them. I also, in the notes, will put the dimensions for the swarm traps that I build. But again, anything uh, as far as stuff that's available online will work for you. This is just what I do. I'm not an expert. It's just what's been successful for me. 
So this will wrap it up for the construction of the swarm traps. Thank you. If you are looking to just hang some traps and not put a bunch of money or do any building, I do have these pro nuke boxes available in the Grand Rapids area. I'm not shipping them at this time. If you're interested, you can message me. Um, again, it's just an easy way to get a swarm trap up or maybe put one near your hives in case uh, some swarm management fails you. Maybe you can get your bees back. Again, I do have them available in the Grand Rapids area. I'm not Unfortunately, not shipping at this time, but I will meet. So even if you're not that close to Grand Rapids area, maybe we can work something out. So they are available.